Hello, and welcome to the Love Your Work Life podcast. I'm your host, Elisa Shuck. Whether you're going for that next promotion, looking for a job, or making a career pivot, I'll teach you how to navigate it all so you can have the career you want. Welcome to the Love Your Work Life podcast, episode 27. When you're in a job search, it's really easy to feel like nothing is predictable, that you're on this roller coaster ride of excitement and anticipation, scariness, and just that it feels so out of your control. And I totally get that because you oftentimes feel like you're at the mercy of other people and that they are controlling your destiny. But you know there are things that are in your control. How you present yourself on your resume, your preparation for interviews, even if you, like one of my clients said recently, was so well prepared and that they didn't actually ask any of the questions that she prepared for. So all of her answers that she had created went nowhere. So yes, it's easy to feel like you have no control over anything that's happening and that your future is in someone else's hands. But I want to tell you that actually there's a lot more in control than you're giving yourself credit for. And this goes beyond all of the tangibles. This goes beyond a great resume. This goes beyond interview preparation. The thing that only you can control actually has the biggest influence on the results of your job search. And that is why I say the most important thing about your job search is how you feel about it. Let's dive into that a little bit. The reason I say your feelings make such a big difference is because if you think about it, feelings always precede an action. And that is because there's this little thing called motivation that's happening from when you feel something to when you take action. And how you feel determines the type of action that you take. So if you're feeling a little bit like this is totally out of your control and you don't feel that enthusiastic about your opportunities, then The action that you might be taking is just routine, applying online, and waiting for somebody else. That kind of comes from this like sort of eh, unenthused feeling about it. But you know you got to do it, so you're going to apply. You're going to apply online. A feeling of desperation and fear might have you applying everywhere to anything and everything that could possibly be a good fit. And if you've listened to me long enough, and if you're active on LinkedIn, you know that actually isn't the most effective way to do it. Because that kind of activity feels like it's productive, but it's not actually productive because you're going to create confusion for yourself. You're going to create confusion for other people. They may not understand why you're applying for that role. And listen, if you're doing your due diligence and you're doing a little bit of research of each of those roles that you're applying for and you're tailoring your resume, well, I can guarantee that you are spending a ton of time in addition to all that applying anywhere and everywhere, and that's gonna wear you out. But if you feel good, if you feel a sense of anticipation, if you feel a sense of possibility, if you feel a sense of, I've got this, ease and certainty, the type of action that those feelings motivate are much more productive because you're being selective, you're being strategic, you're focused, and you're really evaluating roles based on what's right for you. When you feel a sense of possibility, 
and that there's lots of opportunities out there for you, it's so much easier to just chill a little bit and take a closer look and spend the proper amount of time. And even if you feel like there's a lot of possibilities and you have tremendous value to offer, then that's a lot of times where boldness kicks in. Because now if you feel secure and sufficient in what you have to offer, then reaching out to a human directly with a great cover letter, an email, an in-mail, or even a connection request, if you're leveraging LinkedIn in your job search, feels so much easier to do because you're not overly dependent on any one thing being the thing. So pay attention to your feelings. Pay attention to the thoughts that are creating those feelings because we can't always control our feelings, but we can control our thoughts. And this kind of goes back to my life coach, Brooke Castillo, and that is our thoughts are always creating our feelings. So if you're wondering why you are feeling great, if you're wondering why you're feeling bad, reverse engineer that back to the thoughts that you're having about your job search. So let's take job search is just a thing. It's a circumstance. It's something that you're doing. Your thoughts about it, I have possibilities. This could be my next big thing. Wouldn't it be great if this was my opportunity to give myself a promotion? Those kinds of thoughts are naturally going to create feelings that serve you. And I, you know, I almost said positive feelings, but but here's what I've come to learn about thoughts is there isn't really any such thing as a positive thought or a negative thought. There are only thoughts that serve you and thoughts that do not serve you. Because it's true that a that fear a thought of, oh my gosh, what could happen? Man, that sometimes that thought serves you well. It stops you from making a bad decision. But sometimes that thought is not serving you. Oh my gosh, what if I reach out and this recruiter doesn't accept my connection request? Well, that thought will create a feeling of disillusionment, of doubt, And when you feel disillusioned, defeated, and doubtful, what kind of actions are you taking? You are retreating. You are not doing the things that you know need to be done to have an effective job search. So if you're having trouble getting motivated in your job search, go back to your feelings. Take one step further back from that to your thoughts and really get into it. I like to recommend to all of my clients, especially before interviews, that you do what I call a doubt download. And that is you get all the weird, creepy, doubtful thoughts out of your brain and onto a piece of paper. This isn't something to overanalyze. This isn't something to judge yourself about. But it is a way to get that negative content out of your brain because it doesn't serve you. Those thoughts do not help you create good feelings that will ultimately motivate the actions that you know you want to take in your job search. So if you're struggling with feeling good about your job search, do a doubt download. Do it every morning. Do it throughout the day when you identify that your actions are not aligned with your desires, the things you want to do and the things you know are required as part of the job search process. I hope this helps because your feelings are the things that will help you take action, be a curious watcher of your brain, replace those doubtful thoughts, Replace the thoughts that don't serve you with better 
thoughts, even neutral. I'm not even saying this has to be all rainbows and butterflies, but I am saying that if you pay closer attention to the way you're feeling and you take control of the one thing that you can, your superpower, and that is taking control of your thoughts, then you'll be much more in control and find that you're navigating your job search much easier. All right, I know this will help you. Put it into practice. Make it a habit to pay attention to what you're thinking and control what you're thinking so that your thoughts will create feelings that drive action and ultimately help you get the results you want. Whether that's a great interview, whether that's making those connection requests, or ultimately making great decisions about where you go next in your career. Hey, if you enjoy listening to this podcast, you have to come check out my Love Your Work Life programs on Teachable. You can choose from on-demand courses or personalized one-on-one coaching with me. We take all of this material and apply it so that you can live it and create the career you want. Because when you love your work life, all the other parts of life get better too. So go to Love Your Work Life Teachable as search terms or love-your-work-life.teachable.com. I will see you there.